Welcome behind the scenes of our photo shoot, The City. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And it's been a little while since we've made a photography tutorial, but we got a perfect comment on YouTube. Alex Damien said, hey, can you do a portrait styled in the way of Sin City? And that's exactly what we did. In this behind the scenes, we're gonna cover three key elements to shooting this image. We're gonna go over lighting, we're gonna go over props and style, and we're also gonna talk about shooting for a composite. These portraits are super stylized. This is not something they would do for like a high school senior portrait or an executive portrait. This is obviously very Hollywood type portrait. And one of the biggest things that gives this image like the look is the rim light. Now a rim light is basically a light that comes from behind your subject. And you can see I'm actually rim lit right now. If I take my hand and cover up lighting here, you can see there, there's a, a rim of light that appears on the side of my on the side of my face. And if I put my hand there, the light disappears. So I've got lights actually behind me and above me right now that are creating that really nice rim light. So anytime you want this effect, that's basically gonna mean placing either bare bulb lights or lights in a seven inch reflector. You can use a grid if you choose to, or you can use something like a strip box. You just basically wanna get these lights behind your subject. So on either side, and we're also throwing in a light on the top, which is lighting up my hair and creating that nice even glow all around your subject. So the rim lights are basically the first lights to set up, so we get that nice even glow. Now, if you got lights just behind your subject, obviously the front of your subject is gonna be completely dark. So we need another light there. And usually you're gonna be using something like a beauty dish or a softbox to get like a nice, like large soft light on the front of your subject. That's a really typical light. But for these images, we actually wanted it to be a really hard light because that's kind of the style we're going for. So we basically took a light, we're using Einstein's and we're using seven inch reflectors, which it basically makes a really small light source. And we just put that right in front, not directly in front of the subject, but off to the side. So we get a light on one side of the subject. And then hopefully if we're lucky and you can see it right now, we'll get just a little bit of light on the other side of your subject. So that takes care of everything in the front. And again, we want some area of darkness on the face because that's the style of the image. So as far as the light that actually hits your subject, that's it. We've got three lights behind the subject and then one light in front of the subject. And they're all small light sources, which means if you guys don't have these like Einstein's and things like that, you could use speed lights. If you're shooting in your house and you don't have any like photography lights, you could totally just use like light bulbs that you got, you know, Lowe's or Home Depot and a simple socket or, or a couple lamps just set out. Really, they're just like a couple hard light sources placed around your subject. So that's all the light that hits me. Next, we're gonna talk about our background. Now we're shooting on a green screen background. We're gonna go ahead and turn it off. There we go. So you can see I'm just on green right now. And basically we need to light our green screen in the background as well. Now we're in kind of a dark studio. So we actually had to place lights on our background. And in this case, right now for the video, we've just got some Kino flows on the background. But for our actual photo shoot, we just set up a couple lights that were bare bulb shooting into the background. So we just need to make sure to light up that green. So when we go into Photoshop, when we go into compositing, we have a nice even green behind us. Now, if you guys are shooting in a light studio or if you're shooting, maybe you can take your green screen outdoors, you probably don't have to light your green screen. It'll just actually be lit by the ambient environment. But because we're in a dark studio, we had to light our green screen. So that's why the lighting looks a little bit more complex than it should be because two of the lights are actually shining on our background. But as far as the subject is concerned, it's just three lights behind us and one light in front of us. So using rim lights is really cool. Basically it gives you like this really nice glow around your subject. But if you have lights behind you and they're shining forward, a lot of the time the light's gonna actually enter in to the camera and it's gonna cause like a really big lens flare. And the way you kind of get around that is by using a flag. So we've got a couple flags. They're basically just black cloth. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this flag 
out of the way so you can see the light that's actually lighting me right now. And without this flag, it causes a huge flare in the camera, which is gonna ruin your image. So all you have to do is put a piece of black fabric, or these are actually flags that, like the proper photography flags that we have in the studio. But if you guys just have like a piece of black fabric or something like that, that's totally going to work as well. So just keep in mind, if you've got your, if you've got your lights behind your subject and they're shining straight forward, you're gonna have to block that light somehow from entering the camera or you're gonna get a big flare in your image. Another big part about creating an image like this is getting all your styling and your props and just like the little details right. Now, some of that stuff has to be done here on set during the photo shoot and some of that's gonna be done afterwards in Photoshop. So things like I, I wet my hair for this image, like it's supposed to look like it's snowing or raining or something like that outside. So I wet my hair and kind of like had it come down in front of my face for the actual images. And we brought a leaf blower in to actually like blow my hair around, which would make it look like it's outside. So that's detail number one. Detail number two is always gonna be in like styling and wardrobe. So for this, it's actually relatively simple. I'm just wearing like a dark jacket with a dark shirt underneath. I've got like a you know little necklace here like that to just add a little bit of detail. Thankfully, this is like a relatively simple shoot. If the, we were trying to like recreate like a Marie Antoinette, like a period piece, obviously like this would not work. But for something like Sin City, this is totally fine. Especially if we light it correctly, it's not really gonna look the same, you know, it's not just gonna look like a regular jacket. It's gonna have that kind of like extra style added to it. We also had to make sure we used a fake gun. So we've actually got a prop gun in this. Um, it's got like a little orange, uh, basically piece of plastic right around the tip, but that's really easy to Photoshop out. So um, using things like this really helps to complete that effect. And we had to, some things we kind of kept in mind during the photo shoot, um, for instance, like the prop gun, it's gonna reflect light a little bit different from my skin and the jacket and things like that. And basically we spent a lot of time like figuring out exactly where we were actually going to hold the gun to make sure that it would reflect light. So it wouldn't just be like a big black blob. We actually wanted the light to reflect all the way down the barrel. So that's basically a matter of just making sure that the lights that are out front reflect off the gun and then go back into the camera. And that's a little bit of just kind of trial and error, but once you find a place then you just kind of keep the gun in, in the same place and kind of move, move yourself to like make sure everything works. So we knew from the beginning we'd actually be shooting this image as a composite. And that basically means we're gonna be photographing our subject here in the studio and then replacing the background. So one of the first big things to think about is your choice of background. And the general rule is you want a background, either color or tone, like light or dark, that's gonna be completely different from your subject. And green is often a really good choice because I don't really have any green on me. I don't have much green in my skin. I don't have green on my jacket. So being able to select out the green as a different color range in Photoshop and just completely get rid of it is actually really easy to do. Now, I'm wearing a dark jacket, so if I wanted my background to be a light color, like you know, white or a really light gray, that would totally work as well. If you don't have a green screen, that's not a huge deal. You just want something that's going to contrast to your subject. So if you're shooting a subject that's really light, you can use a dark background, and you can use the difference between those two to make a selection and then cut your subject out in Photoshop. Another important thing to think about when you're actually shooting for a composite is that I've got, like right now, I've got lights and flags and things like that just inches from my head. And I know that I'm gonna be cutting me out of my background, so it doesn't really matter. And that's kind of one of the beauty parts about compositing. You can shoot these things in your basement, your garage, and you can put lights all the way around your subject. Just as long as they're not touching your subject, because you're gonna be cutting them out and putting them a different background, you can really get creative. So you can set lights all around your subject and you really don't have to worry about much. As long as I stay in about the same place and I'm doing my posing and things like that, everything else around me is gonna go away in Photoshop. So kind of keep that in mind. Compositing is a really good place to play around because you can bring in like things that are not gonna be in the final image really close to your subject. You can photograph them and remove them out later. So it makes lighting, especially lighting an image like this, much, much easier. So when you're photographing a composite, there are things that are not going to be in the final image, like the background, you're gonna cut that out. But the things that are gonna be in your final image, like your subject, um, that actually matters when it, in terms of your camera placement and angles. So for this image, we actually brought the camera down low to about waist height, and it's pointing up and shooting right about 30 millimeters. And the reason for that 
is because we wanted to make uh, the subject, which wound up being me, a little bit more powerful. So shooting down like from a little bit lower and kind of giving up gives that like powerful look. So if the camera was a little bit higher, it would have given a completely different look in the image. And that's not something that you can change in Photoshop. So keep in mind, like that's still an important part of your final image. And as far as your camera settings go, because we're shooting with strobes, we're shooting at one over 1 60th of a second here in the studio. So we don't want any like motion blur or anything like that. And we're also shooting at a pretty closed down aperture. So anywhere between F8 and F11, because we want everything, basically you want your entire subject to be in focus for the end composite, because you don't want to have your subject in focus and then, you know, like part of your subject out of focus and then your background in focus again, because that's like optically that would never happen. So you can shoot basically using your higher apertures to make sure that your entire subject stays in focus. So that's it for our behind the scenes look at the actual photo shoot part of the city. Look forward to a couple Photoshop episodes that are gonna show you how to get your subject from basically on a green screen into the final image, all done in Photoshop. Just remember, when you're shooting for composites, make sure you pay attention to your lighting, your props and styling, as well as the key elements like surrounding your subject in lights when you're actually shooting for a composite. It's gonna make it much, much easier. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you like what we're doing here on Flurn, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have a question about shooting on a green screen or about the lighting we used or anything to do with this photo shoot, just leave it in a comment right down below and we'll do our best to answer your questions. Thanks again, guys. And if there's anyone you know in your life who loves stuff like this, <laughs> make sure to send them to flurn.com. We'd love to have them as a part of the family. Thanks again, guys, and I'll flurn you later.